Hey guys, this is the Science Olympiad live stream for experimental design. My name is Danica. And I'm Netta. And I'm excited to talk about experimental design with you guys today. So um, to start off, just what experimental design is and what the competition entails um, is that when you go to your competition, obviously for this year, because of COVID, it's different, but Danica, we'll get to that later. Um, you are given an overarching question. So for example, the question may be, how does the height a ball is dropped from affect its rebound height? Um, so then based off that question, you're given materials to design a lab procedure. Um, and then you conduct a lab, gather the data, um, and report your findings and your conclusions. And these pictures below kind of give you an idea of what it looks like during the competition. So obviously this year it's very difficult to conduct the lab and gather data as like in all the pictures, there's a lot of people around and we're doing it mostly online now. Maybe things will change when it gets into the second semester and like, February, March, and when that happens. But for now, most of the competitions are going to be, well, all of the competitions are online. So that part is omitted for this time. Instead, what they'll end up doing, at least they have for the competition so far, is that they'll give you the materials and may or may not give you an overarching question, but you'll still have to plan a lab and write, write up an entire lab just without actually doing it. But you'll still end up doing it and saying like, what possible conclusions and what possible errors and whatnot. And I know um, my school is doing satellite science Olympiad. Um, so they're also, while we have not had any tournaments yet, um, there is a possibility that um, depending on how the COVID situation is in your state and is at your school, um, you may be able to do all of this, but from the comfort of your school and then just send pictures um, and videos to the tournament leaders. So that might be a possibility, I'm not sure. Um, and then the event parameters or just the rules in general are that you can have up to three people. And I personally recommend using those three people because there is a lot to cover. So um, then you must have goggles and you're allowed to have one timepiece. I just recommend a basic stopwatch that's shown um, in, the, in the slide below. Um, and then you can have a linear measuring device. I recommend a meter stick um, because you never know on what scale you have to measure something. Um, and you can have a calculator, definitely have at least a gra graphing calculator. Um, a TI-84 plus is what I always use because um, it's the easiest to use and you can graph on it and you can calculate the statistics section. Um, and last but not least, as we mentioned before, all the other materials are provided. So you don't need, need much for this, this event. So again, depending on what type of competition you're going to go to, they're going to state the rules this year because it's all over the place right now. Like for instance, if you're gonna do it online, you're probably not gonna have to wear goggles or you're not gonna have to bring like a stopwatch or anything like that. But if it's satellite, you could end up doing that, but from the comfort of like your school or something like that instead. But make sure you check the rules for your specific um, competition beforehand because they'll state 100% what you can bring and what you can't. Yep, it's all relative your, to your situation, so. Now scoring, so um, we have more, a more specific um, outline later in the presentation, but there are 15 separate sections with varying points. Um, and the, all the, um, um, yeah, all the different sections are varying points. So there are some sections with higher points than others. So um, they're listed below and those are the ones I recommend that you focus on. And those are the ones my team and I focus on um, the most because we want the most points to win. So um, just a basic tip. So since there's not necessarily like an actual procedure and the quantitative data is a lot less during like the online version, I know for that because of Bear SO, they ended up putting those, like feeding those points into the last three sections more instead of those ones since they couldn't place those anyway. But again, 
make sure you just pay attention to what type of competition it is, check the rules, do that 100%. So the skills required, um, and this is just my personal opinion, so um, spare with me, I guess. So I recommend that you have good teamwork skills and collaboration skills because, I mean, obviously for this year it's different, but um, if you are doing sa Satellite Science Olympiad and you do have the opportunity to actually work in person with a team, it's important that you guys get along and that you understand each other when you're communicating because, again, you only have 50 to 55 minutes and you're working um, very fast um, and you just um, need to understand each other. Also, um, you need to be efficient because um, if you don't design this whole elaborate lab, you won't have time to get through all the steps um, required in the um, event. And also having some AP physics knowledge or just general physics knowledge will be helpful because most of the, um, the overarching questions are based on um, physics, kind of at least in my personal experience. experience that's what I've had. Um, and last but not least, just some basic lab skills um, and knowing the basic um, lab procedures and what is a part of a lab is very helpful to know. Yeah, I 100% agree on the teamwork part is a huge thing, especially if you're away from each other, like if you're on call and stuff like that, that's going to get really chaotic if you don't have that teamwork and collaboration skills. And the AP physics knowledge, the basic lab skills that 100% still applies now, no matter what type of competition you're going into, because this event is, there's so much to cover for this event, and you have to have that synergy in order to be able to do so. Also, I suggest knowing or having some statistics or AP statistics knowledge too, because like I said in the other slide earlier, they take the points that you can't really apply for the previous competition, like the previous years, and they put it into the last three sections. And those tend to circle around like statistics types of information and knowledge that you should be able to know. So for instance, like at Bear SO, there were a handful of questions that talked about confidence intervals. And I know from my experience that I would not have known that unless I had taken AP statistics before. So some tips and tricks. Um, as we both talked about before, teamwork is essential for this event. Um, and so I recommend just delegating the roles, like um, have your advisor create um, labs for you guys to go through the, this whole process um, to see who's best in what role. Like we, um, normally my team and I, we um, kind of split up the, the test into three sections. Um, so the, the first section is the person who does all the writing, who writes out the lab procedure and the variables and everything. Um, and then the second person is the data collector. Um, they run the lab and are in charge of all the calculations and the timing. And then the analyzer is the person who writes the conclusion and the CER um, and does the whole cleanup and everything. So it's easier to, um, kind of organize yourselves and get through the event efficiently if you if you kind of assign these roles beforehand. Um, and again, have three people um, to work with for this. Use, use the maximum number of people you can have because there is a lot of information to cover. And um, through my personal experience, it's very difficult to, to make go through this whole lab with only two people. Um, and just lastly, don't panic, don't rush, be efficient, um, just practice. There's really um, no way to prepare for this event other than to practice and um, with your group and acclimate um, to the environment you're in. Yeah, all of these tips are great to keep in mind. Um, like I said in the other slide before that the data and the data collector and all that probably can't really apply much into the previous situation. So they might end up just doing all the statistics problems and things like that. So it's just your numbers person, right? But they're probably gonna be doing a lot more different roles than 
what they had originally in previous years and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, make sure you just keep calm, keep that team synergy intact, try to avoid arguments because those are going to waste a lot of time. Because again, there's so much to do in this event. And honestly, just if someone has an idea, use that idea. You're trying to be quick, but don't rush still. Because again, you only have 50 minutes, but make sure you're doing everything as like meticulously as you can. Yes, and if you don't mind going to the next slide, Danica. Um, there are, these are all kind of, these are all the, the um, steps, I guess, and all the things that the um, event proctors look for and kind of grade you on. So this is a lot and don't panic. Um, it can be overwhelming at first, but through practice, you'll get used to it and it'll um, seem easier. Um, so. I split this up into three sections. So the first part is what the first person would be in charge of, second part, the second person, third part, the third person. So just delegating these roles. Um, and you can see that kind of the first section is more geared towards the hypothesis variables, um, kind of designing, designing the experiment. The second part is the numbers. The third part is um, the conclusion and the wrap up um, to make it easy. And usually in the rules, they'll have this, like I know for the official science Olympiad rules, they have this rubric at the end of the rules for experimental design or for Barra. So they sent us an extra set of rules for all the changes that they had to do later on, which they ended up calling the event experimental and data analysis because they had to change up so many parts of it. But just a hundred percent, again, check the rules, make sure you know exactly what they're asking for.